Hello everyone. Uh, we're back again. We got our latest tool. Uh, I was wanting to make this now for a little over a year. Uh, but I just didn't have the time to do it. And at my full time job they had a job where they had to put an internal groove at a certain degree angle at a certain depth. And I told them if, well, if I make this up real quick, I said I can do that right here on the manual mill. So for a lot of you people that have been following us, you know that I do a lot of lathe work right here in the mill. And so what I got with this unit, I'm, I'm actually uh, mimicking a angle cr uh, cross slide, uh, the compound uh, that you have on your lathe over there. Uh, so basically the function of it, I got a half 20 thread. And uh, with this thread over here, I went with a half 20 because I wanted to have a nice footprint and a little bit of uh, power if I needed it. But the other thing that's nice about it is that uh, with a 20 pitch, that means for every full revolution that I have, I've wound in 50 thousandths. If I'm working on a diameter, and then that's 100. So that way I can just, you know, just track the counting of this uh, uh, if I need to to do some rough work. I can always mount indicators on here so that I can get even more precision. But I've made this uh, unit uh, so that I can actually put the feeler stock, gauge blocks, whatever I need inside here. Uh, this surface is ground. This surface is ground. And you can see I got some nice uh, heavy die springs sitting in there that uh, keeps pressure on that. And this thing, I got some high pressure grease in here. It works real smooth. So in the case, uh, what I needed, I needed to put a groove about 40 thousandths uh, deep per side uh, at a 30 degree angle. So here I got 40 thousandths worth of feeler gauge. I can come up and just tighten up on that. And now I'm set. So now as soon as I come up and touch the angle on the internal part, I have it inked up as soon as I touch it. I can move the feeler gauge out and then I can wind until I'm bottom out and I know I'm, I'm an exact 40 thousandths per side uh, of what I need to do. So this unit uh, uh, is working pretty nice. I got plans in the future to uh, do a whole lot more with this unit and this whole concept with uh, uh, lathe tooling in the uh, mill. And I just want to take a little bit of time uh, before we start uh, turning is Every time I do some lathe work in the mill, I always get the comments, well, why don't you use a lathe? Well, my lathe doesn't have a digital. A good friend of mine let me borrow it, and it works good for some things, but there's no digital on it. It's an old machine. It's wore out in a lot of areas, and so i got to be very selective on what I, I do in it. The milling machine, on the other hand, we bought brand new. Uh, it's uh, hardly anywhere in the thing. It's nice and tight yet. we got a real nice, accurate digital on the thing. And so I can do a precision level far greater on this mill than what I can do on the lathe. And, and on a lot of the stuff that I do in the mill is actually a lot faster and easier and more convenient than the lathe. Uh, the, probably the next reason uh, that I've been doing some of these videos like this is because there's many of you out there, you have a mill but you don't have a lathe. And when you need lathe work done, this is just showing you some ways you can go about it without having to purchase a lathe, something that can get by. And in fact, a lot of our, our viewers are commenting that they do similar stuff like this as well. And uh, uh, like me, there's some of them that prefer doing some of this stuff in the mill. And uh, so, so anyways, uh, if you want to make comments, we already heard them all as far as why aren't you using the lathes. So I just wanted to settle that right now. And uh, what we're going to do, uh, we have this uh, just a piece of coal roll. I can't show the part that I actually cut. Uh, the, for the customer, but I'm going to mimic uh, something similar to what I've done uh, right here. And so what we're going to do is we're going to try to get an angle set up here in a minute where Adam can actually get the cutting action because it's, it's going to be on the inside of this diameter. I'll face some of this off or whatever, but uh, we got to get the camera positioned so that you can actually see the cut a little bit better. So we're going to probably play around with it a little bit and then we'll be right back. Okay, we're going to get this set up now, and I'm just going to use it, uh, face off the bottom of it, just like we would with a normal lathe. What 
I'm going to do is I'm going to just kind of use this tool to mimic a little bit of an angle in there. The little uh, O-ring groove I was putting in uh, the part, it was on an angle. This is set up for 30 degrees. And it's hard to see up in there. So I don't know how good I have that. Okay, so what we're going to do right now is uh, I got an angle dressed in there and uh, I'm going to come up and just tell the chips start coming out, which they are right now. And what I'll do is I'll take my feeler gauge out and now I'm winding at that 30 degree angle and I'm cutting the tip. Now when you're doing an angle uh, cut like this, you got to make sure you got the proper clearances in the tool. And so now I'm bottoming out. Now I got to back it off, and here I got to make sure the tool's outside the groove again so I can put my feeler gauges back in, and then I can just back out and I know I'm outside the groove. And then that way I can lower the table. We'll pull the part out and we'll let you take a look at it. We'll get a closer, closer picture of it. What we're going to try to get is a, a good enough picture so you can see what was done. But what we have is uh, you can see that there's a groove that's been put in at a 30 degree angle. Uh, the carbide tool with wire burn, uh, the shape in it, and the thing that you got to look for uh, again, uh, when you do these, is uh, if you're if you're if you're going at 90 degrees to the part, and then you can just have a normal clearance. But when you start going at an angle, uh, at least one side of it, you're going to have to have a lot more clearance. Uh, this was a lesson I learned uh, uh, doing the Macme threads for Keith Ruckard, uh, one that uh, uh, <coughs> Robin Renzini helped us out on a lot. But anyhow, you got the same situation here with the curvature of your part at an angle. Uh, you need to, you won't be able to see it, but on the tool you need to relieve it on one side. Now this this tool, uh, you can put that groove on the outside, you can put it on the inside. You can grind these tools, wire burn these tools for whatever shape, sizes that you need. But uh, I'm going to just try to spin that around a little bit so that you can see uh, the groove that's in there. And, uh, yeah, we just want to do this uh, real quick, short video. I'll let you guys see uh, kind of a neat little project that uh, we're working on the last few days over here just to get a hot job from um, my full-time workout. Uh, it worked really good. The parts turned out nice. And uh, so some of you people that don't have a lathe, you have a mill, hey, you can make some little units like this, and you can do some crazy stuff on a mill yet. Well, thanks for watching.